Hi everyone. Just a quick video today to look at this new hot pink spectroflame paint John over at the Redline shop sent me. Previous versions of this paint had to be clear coated. This one, according to him, does not, which makes it a lot easier to use. Just looking at the paint in the bottle, it's crazy bright. It almost fluoresces. In fact, if I turn off the lights and break out my black light, we can see if it really will fluoresce. And of course it does. So it'll be fun to see if the car, once it's painted, also does this. My subject, or victim, depending on how you look at it, will be this 50th anniversary 67 Camaro with an opening hood. I picked up a bunch of these 50th anniversary cars and have been removing the big white blemish Mattel put on all the doors. This way they actually come close to looking like they did 50 years ago. If you like a video on how this is done, let me know below. Anyway, taking the Camaro apart, I can finally open the hood. Not sure why, but all the hoods on these cars have been really difficult to open. And since I'm complaining, I can't believe they didn't include an opening hood for the Mustang. These are not cheap cars. I guess I really expected them to have the same options that the original cars had. The paint ended up coming off rather easy. I was worried that they might paint these cars like they do the pop culture cars. The small scratches in the surface are from a scotch bright pad I used to clean the body with. I did a light polish on the car body. They seem to be zinc plated, so I didn't want to polish through the zinc layer. After I polished, I washed the car in soap and water and then dipped it into some acetone to remove any oils on the surface. After the body dried, I applied the pink spectroflame paint, about six coats, and then set the car aside to let the paint cure. So the next thing to look at is painting the interior plastic. I don't think the blue plastic will look all that good with the pink paint, so I painted it white and then clear coated that with Tessers Gloss Clear Coat. After allowing a few days for the paint to cure, the overall look is nice, but of course I can always improve it by polishing the paint with my Dremel and a buffing wheel. This will remove all the surface blemishes like orange peel and dust. And with that, this quick paint job is done and I can put the car back together. I keep meaning to check to see if these new parts, like the windshield, work in the old cars. If you've ever tried this, please uh, let me know below if it worked or not. So now that the car is put back together, let's place it on a black surface, turn off the lights, and try out the black light. And as you might guess, she glows. Really bright, I might add. I went through my collection of vintage red lines looking for a hot pink car to see if they also fluoresce, but was unable to locate one. If you have one and want to give it a try, let me know what happens below. So I hope you've enjoyed this very brief video on Hot Pink Spectroflame. I'm working on a bunch of other, much longer projects for future videos, but really wanted to try this new paint out. Let me know what you think about it below. I like it a lot, if for no other reason than it saves me a step. It acts just like all the other Spectroflame paints John makes, so no difference there. I guess it comes down to whether or not you like the color and if it matches the vintage color. But if you're familiar with vintage pink redline cars, you know that there is no official pink color. Mattel didn't have any consistency in their pink paint, so you get a ton of different shades. I'll put a link below to a video by the Toy Car Collector where he showcases all the different shades of his pink redlines. And I'll also put a link to this particular paint and to the redline shop below if you'd like to give it a try. Anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.